Hey friends, I'm still not done talking about relaxing and having chill vibes and it's a very windy morning, which is unusual. Is it unusual? So the last time I made a video here, it was hot. Now it's not hot, now it's, it's about 10 a.m. And I was just walking here really slowly. I'm gonna buy breakfast. This time I'm gonna buy Carrot King. There's, so there's this guy across the road from my place. And at first it was a two-man team and then one of the guys left and they make, you know, there's like this whole set of foods that people make at certain stores. It's like, it's almost like genres of stores, I guess. So it's like, they make carrot cake, charcoal and yaks with fried noodles, um, Hokkien meats and other kind of noodles, oyster omelette. There's like a, a set of things that a certain kind of store would make. So like, if you ask Singaporean, uh, you know, is there a chakwe diao store? You would typically assume that they probably also make carrot cake, I think. It's usually the case. Anyway, uh, so one of the guys left and then, so the other guy was like, well, I can't make all eight or nine dishes every day, so I'm gonna narrow down the list. And so he eliminated carrot cake from his list, which is outrageous because the carrot cake is really delicious and cheap and everyone loves it. And I was heartbroken, honestly, because like it, there was no carrot cake place immediately around me. What's my note? Like a... Ignore that. <laughs> uh, there's no carrot cake place immediately around me, and like the nearest carrot cake, carrot cake place, I would have to walk like well, ten minutes, fifteen minutes. Whereas now I can get it in like two or three minutes, just coming downstairs. Like it's a huge difference in my quality of life. And I'm sad when it's gone. I used to eat it for breakfast almost every day. It's just so good. It's like eggs and oh, it's raining. Aha. Anyway, <laughs> all of that just to say, I feel good, man. I feel relaxed. Uh, I'm reminded of what it was like when I was done with school, when I was done with my junior college examinations, when I was done with my military service, and when I left my job. It's the same vibe each time. And I, can, I now have enough life experience to say that it's not any one of those things specifically, right? It's not that school was miserable, I mean, it was, but like, uh, you know, or the military, you know, or my job, I loved my job, and yet it felt so good to leave. And I guess, I guess you could say, I mean, you want to be careful to diagnose things properly, and I guess one way you could diagnose this is that I'm very bad at taking breaks, and very bad at vacationing, and, and holidaying, and so when I eventually leave a thing entirely, uh, it feels really good because I'm, I'm making up for, for lost time of a backlog. I do remember uh, when I was done with school before I went to the military. So like I had like about four months or three and a half months of free time. Um, towards the end, I was not even having a good time. You know, I, I, I was just uh, antsy. Although, you know, I was like 20, 19 years old, 20, you know, 19? I did. Yeah. And I was just nervous about my life. Like, what was my. I'm 20 years old, 19 going on 20. What's my life going to be? You know, I not, I am not in university. I don't know what job I'm going to get. I don't know if I want to try and go back to school. Uh, I didn't have a blog. My, my blog was. Hardly anybody read my blog. I had no audience. So it's like, what's going on? What's my life going to be? I don't know yet. So I was very stressed about that. <laughs> And I was just hanging out with a bunch of bum friends every day. Um, and that was not ideal. You know, if I could go back in time and, and nudge my younger self, the main thing I'll do is challenge him to spend, to meet more people, right? To hang out with people that I already knew were cool, but I wasn't making the effort to. I was just kind of lounging with my same bunch of deadbeat friends. And I think, they, I mean, I'm not insulting that we were all the same back then, you know, we were all just. But, you know, like, is that too much? Like, should a child be ambitious? I would say, you know, the reason I bring this up is because I know, I believe I can say with confidence that I was more ambitious than I wanted to admit to myself and to my friends. And so I wouldn't be like, you should be ambitious. I think that's overfitting. You know, I, I'm, I don't think anybody should try to be ambitious. I think you should awaken to the self that's within you already and be honest with yourself about who the fuck you are <laughs> you know and that's uh it's not easy right like again it's like people have been writing books about these for thousands of years hundreds of years. hundreds thousands plato was talking about this 
300 BC, 369 BC. And he was saying, you know, why don't we just sit down and examine ourselves and see how, who the fuck we really are? <laughs> you know, like, it's just... And it's hard because that's just the birth of, of true individualism in a non... stupid way, right? In a non... Clung, in a non... Uh, deathly way. It, it does seem like every good idea eventually gets gets transmogrified into a bad idea, <laughs> right? So like, uh, I, I kind of surprised myself that the first post on my Substack is about, it's kind of about ancestor worship, right? It's kind of about, about respecting your ancestors, which again, I'm Singaporean, you know, we live in a culture that over-indexes on filial piety, and like, we use that phrase, filial piety, it's an actual phrase that we use non-ironic like just casually like we're supposed to be filial to our parents and um, we overdo it and we, uh, even the phrase overdo it I don't know if that's the right phrase it's zombified you know it's turned into a husk it's crumbled into ash it's uh, and so I saw somebody quote Mahler Gustav Mahler he said something like tradition is not about the worshipping of ashes it's about like the preservation of a flame or like, like, like just keeping a flame alive and we do not, we are not very good at keeping flames alive as a species. We have a lot to learn on that front. We tend to, you know, we kill the golden geese. We, we choke the life out of things, right? We, we commodify, we turn things, we, we take complex challenges and we simplify them to the point of, of it no longer being the thing that it was supposed to be, right? Like we just are almost eager to misrepresent, eager to, to turn know richness into shit <laughs> right and maybe that's that's kind of inevitable and so we've got to do it, do it in cycles and we have to have fresh you know and this is what i believe real intellectuals are supposed to do like actual intellectuals uh or whatever you want to call them you know public figures leaders like again any phrase that we use ends up going through the same process where people who don't really want to do the work which is difficult and unpleasant and tedious and all those things. People don't really want to do the work. They just want to look like they do the work and they want to get credit for doing the work, but they don't want the sacrifice that it involves. They don't want the unpleasantness, pain. And yeah, man, that's fine. Yeah. I'm in such a good mood, I love it. Um, I'm in a good mood because I, I, it's not even that I slept very well last night. You know, I was watching a video with a friend watched a movie about Horizon Zero Dawn like it's just a, a game movie that the editor stitched together with like in-game footage and cutscenes very beautifully done and it's just it's nice to share that moment with a friend I'm awake now I'm gonna buy breakfast have breakfast with my wife clean the house you know it's just it's nice it's, I, I, I have nothing to prove right now because I've published my book and so that feels really really good and yeah I'm just I'm just really just making these as like uh, time capsules for myself. I hope you guys are well. Done.